Hey everyone, this is Neon Polygons, and today I want to take a look at a very rare, underappreciated, and underutilized import console from the 1990s known as the Casio Loopy MySeal. For those of you watching this channel, you probably already know what the Casio Loopy is, but for those of you who don't, essentially the Casio Loopy was a console released only in Japan in 1995 by Casio that primarily was targeted toward younger girls. Um, now, in essence, the Casio Loopy was never really meant to kind of be a video game system to compete with the consoles of the time, such as the Sony PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, and even from the generation before, such as the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. The best way to kind of uh, put this in perspective, the Casio Loopy was never really meant as a video game system but more so as kind of a toy. In essence, it's uh, the best way to kind of look at it is it's more as like a sticker printer. And that was essentially its appeal for a younger female audience. So it was never really meant to be a hardcore video game system. It was really just meant to be a somewhat of a niche item targeted toward the younger female demographic. And when I mean younger, I'm talking probably 12 and under in Japan. Now, again, most people will generally make fun of this system, don't really know the context in which the system was released. Now, this came out during like the mid-1990s in Japan, and at the time, uh, one of the growing fads in Japanese pop culture was kind of the photo booths that you would see in arcades. So that became kind of a growing trend where, you know, girls and teenagers would end up going to arcades or kind of like malls in Japan. And they would go into these these booths where essentially they would, you know, take pictures and add kind of essentially subtle graphics to them or add little slight effects that they would be able to print out. And it would be a unique sticker that you could only get uh, from these photo booths. Now, Casio essentially had the idea of basically saying, hey, what if we can replicate that, but for a home experience? And I'll get to the point where they talk about kind of like how you can actually print out your own photo. But what they decided was, wouldn't it be really cool if we can create a photo printing experience that somewhat has the elements of photo booth editing, um, but brought to your home? and add in some interactive elements a la video games that you know would cater and appeal to the younger Japanese female demographic. Now, um, I've actually had this unit for about half a year, and originally when I first got it, I, I kind of thought like, wow, this is pretty crappy, you know? And I, I first played it at retro uh, gaming conventions, and what I realized was the game that they would normally play on for display at these retro game cons was not the right game to be shooting with. Um, and I'll show that you know, what that game is. But basically, in my opinion, of the small library of games that were released for the Casio Loopy, it's probably the least indicative of the actual true fun experience that you can actually have with this. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, like, I'm a grown man, and the fact that I'm actually playing with the Casio Loopy does sound quite comical, but when you look into the technology, it is actually quite interesting. Um, inside the Casio Loopy is the same chipset that's found in the 32X, but the way how it's primarily utilized is really just providing, like, um, a, a wide, deep color palette, and not really for 3D gaming, but really for um, the best way I can kind of frame it is handling multiple scenarios and handling kind of robust editing tools. And so that's really where the processing power of the Casio Loopy comes into play. So I know it gets kind of um, a lot of flack for people wondering like, hey, this essentially had the same 3D capable processing power of the, 30, of the 32X. So why wasn't it put into use? Well, it was put into use, but not in the same context of what we think about um, how you would develop video games for, but it was put in the context of providing all the games that were sold on the Casio Loopy robust editing tools. And you'll kind of see that in the list of games that I provide that essentially take full advantage of it. Um, now, this video is somewhat kind of also like a buyer's guide I want to offer people to people looking into getting Casio Loopy themselves. 
Um, it is actually a very common system in Japan. If, if you were to go to Japan, you would actually see this uh, quite readily in most retro gaming stores. But just because it's very common doesn't mean it's actually going to come cheap. In fact, uh, most of the game stores that I saw it in Japan, um, it was still kind of being sold at the price of about 150 US dollars. So um, while it's very common to see it in Japan, it's not common to see it outside of Japan. In fact, importing this is not an easy endeavor. In fact, uh, you should expect upwards of, I would say, $200 in terms of buying this console and importing it to America. And there are some things to kind of look out for when you're buying a Casio Luffy. Um, one is you can actually find box systems um, very common or very commonly uh, on eBay. However, uh, they'll usually come in two formats. If you can kind of get it in this package, essentially this was kind of a super deluxe package of the Casio Loopy that included two games and three sticker printer cartridges along with the console themselves. Uh, the Casio Loopy, in this package, it came bundled with two games, which is Anime Land and My Puppy Love. And... Um, uh, basically, this is a big box version of the Casio Loopy. Inside of it is actually the true retail size of the Casio uh, Loopy box, which let me just try to pull this guy out. Which is this. Um, this is the Casio Loopy sold by itself with no sticker cartridge and no game included. Um, and it comes basically packaged uh, in the big box. So first things to kind of realize if you're trying to purchase a Casio Loopy is that it does uh, come in two different box types. Uh, you can either just get it as a console by itself, or you can get it with the Super Deluxe package that was released in Japan that included two games and three sticker cartridges. So um, some things to kind of keep in mind with the Casio Loopy that you should look out for when purchasing a unit. Um, it actually came with quite a bit of accessories with it, or quite a bit of, um, not a bit of accessories, but some specific things to look out for. One thing to kind of make sure that it includes is this little thing over here. Um, this is kind of an important piece of an Acasio Loopy because what it is, is that sometimes these sticker cartridges that, you know, let me just pop one open right now. Um, sometimes they'll get tangled up uh, inside the unit and you'll need basically this thing to basically stick in here and essentially rewind the tape so this way um in case like something gets like kind of stuck within the printing process you won't have to like cut the cartridge essentially what you'll do is you'll just like rewind it as like far back as you can and reset the unit and then the unit will essentially auto correct where it will properly um essentially replace the sticker tape correctly in the right slot. Um, and so that's one of the things to make sure that when you're purchasing this unit that it does come with whatever this twisty thing is is called. Um, normally if you were to purchase kind of like a box big big box version, it will normally come with this little uh, whatever this twisty thing is called. Um, the other thing to kind of be aware of when looking for a Casio Loopy is a little seldom known piece that most people kind of miss and that's this little plastic tab that comes in here that's sometimes like lost in the Casio Loopies but basically what this is is if you somehow again got the sticker cartridge stuck somehow this is meant to be kind of like a way for you to kind of like um uh leverage it out of like the unit so you can actually just utilize it so here it is when I pull it out and um of note, I've actually had Casio Loopy units where the sticker where you put in the cartridge was actually broken. So uh, in order for this to get the full functionality of the Casio Loopy, which is the console and the uh, printing capability, you need to be aware of this area over here that there is a space that exists between this component over here and kind of like the edge wall. Um, there are some deep, there are some faulty Casio loopies out there that essentially, well, let me explain what this is. This essentially is the thermal print 
printer itself of the Casio Loopy. So there is no ink cartridges within, or there's no ink within the Casio Loopy or in the cartridges. What happens is there's essentially a, a wax film in the cartridges that alternates in color. And what ends up happening is uh, as you print onto the actual sticker paper itself, the Casio Loopy essentially rotates uh, in and out this like wax film and uh, heats, heats that up against the sticker paper to essentially create uh, the images that you'll see on the sticker. So it uses this, this wax film to more or less like alternate and kind of uh, repeat back and forth the colors that you'll see that should appear uh, on the sticker. And if this, sometimes what ends up happening is the thermal printer uh, will end up getting like jammed and leaned up against the edge wall here in this little bay area where you won't be able to just slot in the, the actual uh, sticker cartridge itself. So uh, just one thing to keep in mind when buying a Casio Loopy is to always ask the seller, um, is the thermal printer working properly? And to make sure that uh, there is a slight space between the thermal printer component right here and the edge of the bay wall. Um, if the seller can't, tell um well actually they can tell because all you need to see is that hey listen there is a clear uh, defined space sometimes it may it may be hard to tell because the the thermal printing unit uh, may actually edge a little bit like toward the wall and you can't tell if there is actually a true space the best way to kind of tell the seller to figure it out is to kind of stick a piece of paper and see if he's able you know sh show you an example to see if he's able to kind of somewhat do this. If he's able to do that, to stick a slide of uh, paper and slide it between, then that space exists where um, the printer will function just fine and you can slot in a cartridge, no issues. So um, that's just one thing to keep, of, uh, keep in mind when buying a Casio Loopy to look out for is, does it have these little plastic components? Um, and they're really, I don't really know how to describe them. I guess you just have to say, does it include the rewinder and does it include the plastic tab that's found within the um, cartridge bay? And again, those are important because if your sticker cartridge ever gets jammed, that's what you're going to need to rewind the unit. So um, with the Casio Loopy itself, again, um, they're very common in Japan, but they are still pricey in Japan. So that's one thing to keep, a, keep in mind that these units are not cheap. And while they may be common, I would say, and I would say not so much outside of video game, video game and hobby stores. And when you do find one, you don't find them in mass quantities. You actually probably only find like maybe one unit available. So, um, so that's pretty much it. The other thing to kind of keep note is that I've actually had Casio Loopies that are, have been yellowed. Um, and uh, the true color of it is kind of like this grayish purple is the best way I can kind of describe the color tone. Um, and I've actually had a Casio Loopy where I had the add-on unit, the Magical Express, which I'll get into in just a little bit, that you could see where that it was not yellowed around here, but the rest of the whole unit was yellowed. So... Um, these units do get yellowed. They do get yellowed quite easily. And so it's one of the things to keep in mind to ask the seller, is there any yellowing on the unit? Um, and so from that standpoint, that's pretty much it. It's a cartridge based system. So for the most part, you shouldn't have any issues in terms of like games not working. But the key thing to keep, but the one thing to keep in mind is, um, asking all the questions about those extra components and checking to see if that little space exists between, the uh, thermal printing unit and the st and the bay wall. Now, what's really cool uh, is that again, it does use a thermal printer, and the only kind of best example I can tell you of like what a thermal printer is is um, essentially it's a printer that uses heat to create an image. And the two best examples of that are when you go to a grocery and you have a receipt printed. That's essentially a thermal printer. It's not using ink. It's essentially uh, you're putting a roll of paper and then it heats up what the numbers should look like on that piece of paper. Um, the other best example of a thermal printer is the Game Boy camera printer. 
Now, with the Game Boy Camera Printer, um, again, it also did not use ink, but unfortunately, um, the paper itself, for whatever reason, uh, has is not ages poorly. And so if you ever looked at a grocery receipt like years later after you had, you know, look at it or first received it, you'll notice that it starts to fade over time. And the same thing happens with the Game Boy printer that the paper itself is actually what kind of fades out is the best way I can put it. And the image is not as great once you print, no matter uh, how new or even if it was like an unsealed roll of Game Boy printer tape. Now with the Casio Loopy, they don't technically have that issue because of, again, it uses kind of this fax uh, film to kind of create the coloring on the pa on the paper and also because the paper itself is more of a glossy touch as opposed to kind of that how do I best fr phrase it um, that toilet paper like roll that you normally see uh, for the Game Boy printer it's it's a different type of paper quality the Casio Loopy is much more higher end quality I would say and uh, you know, again, this is now technology that is even older than a Game Boy printer, but it prints out at an exceptional quality that, you know, you'll be like amazed at like what what you'll see once it gets printed. Um, and I'll show that in just a bit. So in terms of the games, the library is actually quite small for the Casio Loopy. So I kind of hearken this a little bit to like the Virtual Boy where a complete collection is actually possible. But there's a lot of games that are actually quite hard to come by um, and actually quite rare to find, even in Japan itself. Um, so there were essentially a total, I believe, of about 12 games and one accessory. So yes, it is very possible to get a complete collection, but getting it won't be easy. Uh, so uh, I will show off a list of the games that I actually have here. And... Okay, so they're all in, in Japanese, but for the most part, most of these games, surprisingly, um, to just really use the sticker feature of it, you don't need to know any Japanese whatsoever. Um, you just really just need to keep pressing buttons as uh, to just keep moving forward until it eventually gets you to a sticker editor, in which case you can then print stickers in kind of like these... Um, the art style of the game itself. So the first game that's over here is My Fashion Runway Paris. And what this basically is, is a game where you essentially kind of play dress up of a little chibi character girl and dress her up and then you get to write little captions on it, change the background behind her, change her outfit, and you get to print that sticker. So for a little girl, I think this would be kind of a cool concept. Um, this is a dating sim called My Little Romance. Now, it's a little bit unique in the sense that uh, it's really kind of just a visual novel. And again, because it's in Japanese, I, I was just kind of bypassing through a lot of it. But the way how it works is essentially you just kind of go through like a series of comic panels and you get to choose the actions of what you want to say or what you don't. And that um, changes the result of the next panel. Now, what makes it kind of interesting and kind of funny is... The art in or the, the art panels in the game are kind of like a little bit absurd, and you can actually modify or you can first a print the art panel as it stands as it you know as it shows up, or you can actually modify it where you can change the captions and you can actually use English in the captions and change it to like say like the most ridiculous stuff. So um, to me, this game is actually quite funny because what I'll do is I'll print a bunch of stickers where um, I'll actually you know, go to a number of the panels and I'll change their captions where they're basically like bitching each, every, each other out. So say, for example, like, um, you know, like there's this uh, little caption over here where this guy's talking to this girl, or these two girls are talking to each other and I'll basically just change the caption where one is saying, you're a bitch, and then the other one will say, fuck you, right? So, um, yeah, very mature of me. But <laughs> it's... Uh, it's kind of a funny game when you think about it, that uh, it's a dating sim that uh, if you really don't give a damn about the story, you can actually make like really comical stickers. And I do think from a 2019 perspective or a 2020 perspective, this is actually an interesting game where you can actually make really funny things with the art that they provide you uh, by simply just changing the captions and printing them out. And 
sharing them with friends that you'll baffle them with like these like really uh funny anime pictures that they're gonna be like what is this thing um this game over here is hari hari uh picture star i believe is what it's saying and i haven't really played with this game but basically what it is is it's a really cute game for kids where they get to print out stickers and it's somewhat like a stamp game where you get to print out like little images um and you could somewhat modify it but it's meant more as like a game where um imagine like your school kids and you want to share um stickers with one another that you personalize and you say like merry christmas or um a happy birthday on them and it's it's cute because you know just think back if you were like a 10 year old and you know you want to give a card to your mom or you know to a friend and you want to say like merry christmas to that and you can personalize it where you can say merry christmas mom from you know neon polygons or whatever and so this is kind of like just a really cute game um and there's like really cute characters that you can create out of it and so i really do think that if i was a 10 year old and i had to you know make something for a friend or for you know my mom or you know my family i think this would be like a really cute way to you know show you know you know sh share a gift with them or you know essentially seal a card and and put something on an envelope where you're saying to mom you know from me so this is a really cute game that i i actually think um if if you had a casio loopy would be really cool because um, or like I guess like another use of the Casio Loopy that I never really thought of was it'd be really great for like a classroom where you know you can work, use this for an arts and crafts section and um, essentially uh, you know create stickers where kids can share them with their friends. Um, now here's just a really you know random thing while I have this kind of in a um, display mode but basically if you look at like what the Casio Loopy is doing right now when you don't do anything with a game it then goes into kind of like a display mode and it's right now it's showing kind of like a 2D screen but showing it in a 3D uh, globe that's kind of if you want to know where kind of like the 32x processing power is also kind of utilized it's in that context where it's actually able to kind of like take the imagery of the screen and actually alter it in different you know um, shapes and sizes and so there is some 3d capability that is on the casio loopy but it's in areas where you know most people don't know where to look for so um okay so the next game i have over here is uh, a packet one of the packing games from the, the premium uh, deluxe package uh, and that's called Anime Land. And this to me is actually uh, the game with the most fun because I'm just creating like just wacky stickers of like anime characters and with like weird comic book bubble captions on them. So again, I can see this for, for a 10 year old girl like creating something that's like really cute and funny. But for like a grown adult, this is something where you can just create shit that's like, <laughs> you know, all over the place that's just like ridiculous and like just, you know, rated r captions in general so i'll show you some gameplay footage and that's actually where this footage actually is being shown from right now where it's just showing how the game uh when you're in like a pause menu uh it just shows kind of like the screen and just puts it in different shapes and um like different uh how do i best put this like stand standby modes um, and so finally, the last game I have here, I have, is uh, My Puppy Love. Now, this is the game that most people know the Casio Loopy for. And I actually think it's probably the worst example of what the Casio Loopy can do. Um, the reason most people, you know, I guess, play this game and only know the Casio Loopy by this game is because this is the main packing game that came in with every Casio Loopy. And it's baffling to me that this was the game that actually came out with the Casio Loopy because it sucks. I mean, literally, you start this game and it's like almost like a 20 minute intro of like literally pressing uh, buttons. And basically, the storyline is it's a dog. You you play as this girl and you meet a dog that's somehow like a magical dog. And it ends up uh, on an adventure where you you follow the dog and it ends up on an adventure and you have to do some you know essentially like simple 
simple task and when you get to reach certain objectives you get to print out the picture but by the time you actually get to print out that picture that's almost like an hour into gameplay and it's i should i say the word gameplay loosely it's really just like an hour of pressing buttons and trying to figure out like if you're going in the right direction um so this game unfortunately because most people have played their only experience with the castillo loopy is through this game most people have a very negative perception of the console itself so if you don't play this game and i would say if you play anime land which is probably the best example and the most intuitive interface of trying to figure out how to actually print a sticker on the castillo loopy um i think more people pe more people's perception of the console will be uh positive um I would then say probably this game, Little Romance. Yes, despite it being a visual novel slash dating sim, uh, it may turn people off. The fact that you can actually kind of edit all the comic cap or comic book captions on in this game just actually makes it much more interesting. And for an adult, actually, it's again just makes it funnier to play. Um, now there are some other games that um, I'm planning on getting. I do plan on somehow getting a complete collection of a Casio Loopy. Um, I am getting a game called the PC Collection, which includes a mouse, which will actually make editing some of the um, art that you do on a Casio Loopy much more easier. Um, and um, I'm in the midst of actually getting um, my add-on repaired for the Casio Loopy. So I say the word add-on um, because this console actually came, or it didn't come, but an actual add-on actually came out for this unit called the Magical uh, Express. And what it was, um, was essentially, it was a means for you to attach like any other AV audio video import source into the console. Uh, and then essentially from there, you can actually take a screenshot of whatever that uh, whatever was playing through that audio video source and then actually add a bunch of graphics and text to it and then actually print out that sticker um i actually have two of them both of them don't work um and that's one of the common things that i've started to realize is that the magical express add-on is actually quite hard to find um i actually got lucky and was able to find mines or find the copies that I got through some other Casio Loopies that I purchased and the seller just happened to include it without even realizing what it actually was. Now, unfortunately, again, um, they, for the most part, they're mostly faulty and do not work. And I've checked like everywhere to find these things. Um, I've checked Yahoo Auctions Japan, eBay, Etsy, and even went to Japan and went into a number of hard offs and um, could not find uh, a working copy anywhere I went, but eventually I'm um, hoping that um, one of my friends can actually get it repaired, uh, the two that I sent him over, and, you know, I'll, I'll do a follow video on that. But essentially what it is, like, the example is, like, imagine uh, you're playing a Super Nintendo game, you can actually uh, use that add-on into the Casio Loopy to take a screenshot of that gameplay footage from your Super Nintendo and actually print out uh, that screenshot, do a sticker, and add like a bunch of graphics to it um, on that sticker itself. So let's talk about the sticker cartridges. Um, now, there's actually three formats that the sticker cartridges came in. Uh, the three formats are called XS31, XS14, and XS11. Now, the main difference between each of these... Um, I guess formats which is kind of like how the sticker prints out so if you get the xs14 what it does is it prints it out in kind of like a uh four by or two by two grid whereas the xs31 just prints it out in like one long strip in the midst of the actual sticker itself with the white border and the more common uh cartridge is the xs11 which basically just prints out the sticker as one full whole print like that um actually getting the cartridges are actually very hard to come by now in fact the only way to kind of get these cartridges at this point is actually just to buy it with a casio loopy bundle itself um and uh most sellers you know they realize that they can't sell these without the casio loopy so the only way that they you know you they sell them is they basically say hey buy the casio loopy and I'll include a bunch of cartridges. Um, I am lucky to actually have uh, a number of unused cartridges. As you see here, I have essentially um, 
six XS11, and then essentially these three additional cartridges over here as well. And uh, through those means, I'm actually able to, you know, in my opinion, I'll never worry about having to run out of printing paper to print out these stickers. Um, so I actually find the Casio Loopy to be a very interesting system. Again, I know a lot of people will kind of look at this console and say, well, you know, it was only really made for girls. And yeah, it was. But I think when people think of it as like a video game system, it gets an unfair reception because it was never meant to be a video game a gaming console where you would play like true video games what this was meant for was to capitalize on the photo booth kind of craze in japan in the mid 90s and bringing that experience home so you know think about like when pokemon snap came out in the united states and how cool it was to actually print out your your actual photos at blockbuster at the time now think about if you were able to do it at home how much cooler that would have been and so that's what really the casio loopy was was that it was a means of providing kids like a way of um creating stickers at home and not just creating stickers but creating bringing home that that photo booth experience and adding kind of video game elements and Japanese culture into the mix where you can actually print out like anime or kind of like a DIY, you know, create your own character models and print them out and share them with your friends. And so that is kind of like a really cool thing, um, really, you know, fun notion when you kind of think about it. Um, now with the Casio Loopy, I think it's, if you're able to get the Magical Express, it, it opens the door even more so for additional kind of creativity that you can actually, you know, print out and make. And in my opinion, that is like a really, uh, I think even nowadays, like kind of with the technology we have, that's not something that, you know, is easily able, easily doable by, you know, even our own printers that we can make today. So. Um, so that's kind of like what makes the, in my opinion, the Casio Loopy like really special is that, you know, don't look at it as a video game console, look at it as like more so as an experience of bringing, combining an art editor, um, a visual art editor, adding in kind of somewhat small gameplay elements to them, and then the ability to actually print it out and create that photo booth experience at home. And so if you look at it like that perspective, the Casio Loopy is, you know, a pretty impressive piece of technology. So the game that I'm showing here is um, Anime Land, which is one of the games that uh, comes in the premium package of the Casio Loopy. So let's play some music here as I unmute it. And right now I'm in the standby mode because I haven't touched it for quite some time. So as you see here, it has actually like one of the most robust editors in terms of like uh, a create your character that I've ever, you know, tried out. In fact, you know, keep in mind this this game came out in 1995 and the amount of options that you're able to do to actually edit a character is is, you know, amazing. I would probably say it's on par with that of like making a Nintendo me on the Nintendo Wii. So let's see how like it prints out and okay, so let's print out a let's see how do I get out of this unit. Okay, so I will go here. And again, most of this is in, you know, Japanese, but it's very easy to kind of figure out how to like actually um, print something. All you really need to know is that on the Casio Loopy, the C and D buttons for the most part are kind of operate like how A and B does on other consoles where A is usually like confirm and B is like cancel. So, um, oops. <laughs> so here it is. I can actually like show you what the screen looks like without um, any of like the editing tools and whatnot. And yeah, looks pretty cool. Like, and uh, you get to change like everything from like how you want the character's eyes to look, to their face shape, to their hair, to the background, to their skin tone. I mean, I was just more amazed at how robust the editor was. And then to me, just looking at the technology from the sticker printing capability, that to me was actually pretty cool. So let's see if we can try to print out one of these guys right now. I believe I click, oops. I believe I click on the star. Nope. 
Let's see. Is it this? Bear with me as I play this one-handed. Oh, no. <laughs> so let's try to make an edit right now. Okay, so let's play around with this one. So let's change her hair color. I kind of like the music, by the way. It's, it's, it's really peaceful, I have to admit. So let's try this hairstyle, okay? And let's change her color. Now let's try purple, right? Cool, right? <laughs> Change her eyes. You can even change her eyebrows and say, give her some Cool Cara Delevingne eyebrows over here. <laughs> Change her nose. And, you know, I'm just kind of going through the editor really fast, but you can actually change, like, quite a bit. Change the shape of the nose, change positioning, like, make it upside down. Like, you can pretty much just make anything you want. I'm gonna change her mouth. Let's, let's give her goofy mouth. It's like... Sure. Change her clothes. <laughs> Change her expression. You can almost just give her like a whole like, what the? What? <laughs> okay, let's change that background. Nah. And then let's change the caption. So you can actually, as you see here, you can actually, oops. Purpleness. Um, okay, so let's change what you can see. And you can see here, you can actually use English. So let's say something like, um, let's write something funny, like, let's see, where's a K, there's a K, space, actually, hold on, so depending on how you write it, you can actually use two words, or just make one word and then it will space them out. And then I'm gonna change kind of the size of it. Yeah, there you go. So let's print this guy. Okay, so when I wanna print it, let's see it in action. So I'm gonna confirm, and here we go. So I'm gonna mute this so I can here to printer and see how it works and see the quality of it and the cool thing about it, let's pop this bad boy open So yeah, let's print this guy out, and what you'll see is like it will just come out slightly, and then you press this button, which is basically a shredder or a cutter over here. Feels great. Um, and do we have the image that was shown on screen? I believe we did. Um, so let's kind of hold on. Let's see what the screen looks like. 
without it. Whoa, right? So there's the screen, right? And here is the image that I just played right next to it. Let me try to focus a little bit. And yeah, comes out pretty high quality, if you ask me. Um, and very, very impressive that that looks and almost mimics it perfectly onto the sticker capabilities. It's on the sticker itself. Now, keep in mind, again, this is from this technology is from 1995. Now, look at how how great that print quality is. That's like amazing. That's like that is effing amazing in my opinion and one of the you know cool reasons to kind of get a Casio Lupi is because of all the really cool creative art that you can create I don't care what age you are if, if you know you're a little kid and you know you want to like actually create stuff um for your friends or for your parents or if you're like an adult and you want to just create like just fucked up shit um the Casio Lupi is a pretty cool system in my opinion that you can do quite a bit with so um that's my take on the Casio Lupi. Um, and I do know that a lot of people tend to make fun of this system and tend to think it's it's for girls. And, you know, indeed, that's how it was marketed. But the technology is very impressive. Even to this day, I think 25 years later, the technology is like, um, you know, quite brilliant and fascinating. And for those of you who want to try it out, um, just the thing to keep in mind is that the actual print quality of the Casio Lupi holds up not just well, it still looks as good as it once did, as it did when it was first released in 1995. So you'll get, you know, really impressive um, prints. Now imagine this and then uh, all the other kind of like editing you can do with um, all these other games, like such as like, you know, again, making kind of like uh, little thank you cards or little, um, you know, holiday greetings that you can share out at your, share with your, you know, your mailings of Christmas cards or, uh, you know, kind of making funny comic book captions if you're just like a really like goofy artist or trying to create, um, imagine kind of making a whole concept or a whole Instagram of just, you know, weird, you know, do it yourself fashion. Um, so, there's so many cool things that you can do with the Casio Lupi, and you know I I highly recommend that if you can get your hands on this, totally go for it. Um, don't listen to the naysayers who think it's kind of like a shitty system. It's not meant to be a video game system. It's meant to be an art editor slash sticker printer, and that's that's okay. That's what it's meant to be. And again, think about from this perspective, the technology is 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 just breathtaking even to this day and also uh in terms of the actual uh printing capability it still holds up fairly well 25 years later and it's a if you are a video game collector you know while it is in my opinion not like a great video game system it is very possible to get a complete collection for this unit and that's something that you know most people will not be able to say they have or say they get um so anyways, if you have any questions about the Casio Lupi or, or if there's anything you want to see, you know, leave me a question or a comment in the comment section below. And if you like this video, you know, make sure to like, comment, or subscribe as it would mean a lot to me. And yeah, uh, thanks again for watching my videos and um, anything you'd like to know, let me know. Thanks again and catch you all soon.